Taste in the Bathtub by Kathleen Stevens. Louis skidded down the stairs and into the living room. I can't take a bath, he announced. There's a beast in the bathtub. His mom and dad looked up from the television. Louis, you have 20 minutes to get into bed with the lights out, his mom said. I don't care what's in the bathtub. You get upstairs and take a bath this instant. All right, said Louis, but you'll be sorry if the beast eats me. He went back upstairs and into the bathroom. He stared at the enormous green beast that sat in the tub. Move over, beast, he said. My mom says I have to take a bath. It was a tight fit, but Louis squeezed between the beast's front claws, and the beast propped his scaly jaw on Louis's head. The only problem then was that Louis couldn't reach the back of his neck. Beast, said Louis, would you scrub my neck? And while you're at it, please check behind my ears. The beast used lots of soap for lather. Then he filled his mouth with water and squirted it between his teeth to rinse off Louis. Hey, that tickles, Louis cried as water ran down his back. The beast kept squirting and Louis began to wriggle. Water soaked over the, sloshed over the side of the tub on the floor. Louis jumped out, filled a glass with cold water and tossed it at the beast. Got you, he said. The beast grinned a toothy grin and slapped his tail. Water sprayed the walls, the sink, the floor, and Lewis. Not fair, Lewis cried. I just even things up. Lewis, his father called. What's going on up there? Uh-oh, Lewis said to the beast. He stuck his head out of the bathroom door. I spilled some water, he called. But don't worry, I'm wiping it up. Lewis and the beast mopped up the floor with towels. Then Lewis put on his cowboy pajamas and brushed his teeth. The beast didn't wear pajamas. He didn't brush his teeth either. It's not bad being a beast, Lewis thought. Let's get a snack, he suggested. His mom and dad were still watching television. Lewis pretended he and the beast were cattle rustlers trying to sneak by the sheriff and his deputy. They edged past the living room door to the kitchen, and Lewis made off with two apples. Easy, old pal, he whispered to the beast as they tiptoed back upstairs. The sheriff and the deputy didn't hear a thing. Lewis ate his apple and tossed the core into the waste paper basket. The beast ate his apple, core and all. Come on, beast, said Lewis. Let's have a pillow fight. He grabbed one pillow off his bed and hit the beast with it. The beast flipped the other pillow and hit Lewis on the head. The two pillows flew back and forth. Crash! The beast missed Lewis and hit a can of marbles. Instead, the marbles bounced to the floor and rolled in every direction. For heaven's sakes, Lewis! It is, was his mom this time. What's going on? The marbles fell over, Lewis answered, but I'm picking them up. Hurry up then and get into bed. Daddy and I will be up in five minutes to kiss you good night. The beast swept the marbles together with his forked tail while Lewis picked them up. That's it, Lewis said. We've got them all. He put the can back on the shelf, then knelt down by the bed to say his prayers. God bless Mom. God bless Dad. God bless Grandma and Grandpa. Lewis peeked through his laced fingers. The beast was watching him. And please, God, Lewis added, bless the beast. The beast rubbed his scaly jaw, jaw on Lewis's shoulder. Lewis offered to share his bed, but the beast had other plans. He crawled into the darkness under Lewis's bed. Lewis pulled the blanket up to his chin and waited. Soon he heard his parents on the stairs. How nice to find you ready, his mom said. She turned off the bedside lamp while her, his dad turned on the nightlight. Then they both kissed him goodnight. Hmm, said his mom. You smell all clean from your bath, Lewis. So there isn't a beast in our bathtub after all, asked the dad, his dad rumpling Lewis's hair. Of course not, Lewis replied. Well, that's a relief. Good night, son. Sleep well, Lewis, added his mother. Lewis listened as, his, as their footsteps echoed down the hallway. He waited until they went to the stairs. Of course there's no beast in the bathtub, he called. He's under my bed. And that's the beast in the bathtub.